Welcome to another episode of Scattered Performance. You can hear this kitten purring next to me after we've just taken the intake off. Uh, we've had to get it running by push starting it because the battery's died, so we'll have to get another one of those. But today we've got a few goodies that we've just run down to Super Cheap and got. We're going to throw them on the car and show you how we do it along the way. Stay tuned. Uh, smoke's gone. She blowing a bit of smoke before. <laughs> so on this table here we've got a couple of goodies, uh, we've gone down to super cheap, picked up a nice cheap fuel regulator, pod filter, a couple of other little bits and pieces, spark plugs that I've already updated you about, and obviously some stickers that say we mean business. So um, what you've got here is we just try to keep it simple, we've got some basic tools, and when I say basic I mean cheap. We've got a $40 battery drill that anyone can afford, and the same goes to that Dremel over there, we've got that one from Bunnings for about $45 as well. So um, we don't have a lot of work for the Dremel today, that's just there to, to take off some burrs and other things that we're going to be creating when we drill some holes and uh, cut some of this pipe up to create our own new intake tube. So we've gone ahead and undone all of this. We are talking about our intake pipe before and the reason is we're going to have to make our own intake pipe so we've got room for our dedicated fuel system. So the plan is to throw the fuel system somewhere in here. So like I said, we've already gone through and undone all this, just wanted to show you how it sort of all came apart. So I'll get my nice assistant here, Luke, to help me pull this bastard apart. And we'll get it all back into pieces for you to show you our plans for our new aluminium pipe. It's a good plan. It's a great plan. So as you can see, we've already gone ahead and made a couple of marks. We've, we've pre-fitted the pod, pod filter down in this hole here. So now we know that it fits down this cavity, we're going to start making some cuts and try and get this pipe to flow down there nicely. So a little tip. When you're cutting things and you've got one of these swivel jaws, if you've got to try and take a slither off of whatever you're working with, then you can grab another piece of your, of your work material that you've got floating around the shed and space out the other side of the jaw like so. And with any luck, this will just glide through. Might help if I turn it on, eh? Relatively clean cut, but this is what the Dremel is going to come out for in a moment whereas we take all these burrs off and clean this material up. So I'm just going to get Luke to go ahead and take the burrs off our intake pipe. And while Luke is doing that, I'm going to go play with some silicon. So, while Luke's playing around with the uh, intake pipe, get all the burrs off of it, I'm going to go ahead and measure up some silicon for our intake pipe. Obviously having such a small throttle body and stepping up to a 3 inch pipe and a pod filter, we're going to have to step up the size of our pipe to accept it. So we've gone and grabbed one of these sil silicon reducers, 3 down to 2, 2.5 inches sorry, and um, I'll just go ahead and measure it up and get it ready to cut. So you'll notice I'm actually going to measure it from the centre and not from the edge. And the reason for that is for this little male spigot that we've got here. We kind of want just enough that we're going to cover the whole spigot so we've got a good bite for our clamp. But we also want it to be as short as possible so we can get that radius down in here and get the pod filter in nice and, nice and tight in the firewall. So it's a good set of tin snips, make the job nice and quick and easy. Alright guys, so now we're just going to install the pod filter down into our crevice that we've got our engine bay. It's going to take a little bit of persuading, so bear with me for a couple of seconds here. Uh, we don't want to scratch it up. Obviously it's top of the line SCA branded uh, pod filter, $27 from Super Cheap Auto. It's, uh, the really trick thing about this actually is it will fit anything from a 4 inch, 3.5 inch, down to 3 inch because of these inserts in the uh, mouth of the pod filter. So that's a really trick in the sense that you could buy it for just about any vehicle. So we've got our pod filter down the hole now. Um, we're just going to try and insert our bit of pipe into both mouths. And it might help if I actually throw my hose clamps on there before I get in there. But let me just trial fit it and see what we can do. So it's going to rub on a couple of things by the look of it. But uh, 
at the end of the day, we've still managed to make some space for our fuel tank and extra fuel pump to sit in here and run our solenoids up the back of the engine. So we've finally got our pipe, our new pod filter, and our silicon joins that we've had to butcher to get on there. Uh, we've had to cut an angle that's not really ideal. Uh, as you can see, that the hose clamp is not on square, but that is just because the radius of the pipe underneath is, is sort of in there a little bit funny, but we've got it in there and it's working. There is literally millimetres between this pod and anything around it. So we finally got our new intake pipe in. You can see the clamp's on a little bit of an angle, but that's because we've cut a little bit cockeyed to try and jam it in here. I mean, there's literally millimetres between this new pod filter and everything around it in the bay. So um, it was a tight fit. There's going to be people that you know, jump up and down saying we've got it down in one of the hottest parts of the engine bay, but um, realistically, we don't care. All we wanted to do was make room for our nitrous system uh, when I say nitrous system, I mean a nitrous fuel system that's going to go ahead with this. So, speaking of nitrous, we're also going to have to change the plug, so we'll go ahead and do that now. We're going to remove this valley cover. We'll take just by these three screws here. We'll take off the, uh, the coil plug leads, and uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what plugs we've got in there. I've got some plugs that should fit the engine. I've already stepped it down to a, to a colder plug. Um, the NG, NGK book told me that these ran on a BKR5 or a 4. So I've stepped it down to a six, and we're gonna see how that goes. Hopefully we don't go melting anything. So it's always handy when you're pulling things out of an engine bay to have something like an ice cream container sitting around so you can put all your nuts and bolts in it so you don't lose them. Ready, do it. That one was definitely the best looking one so far. It had a little bit of tan on it still. valve cover, instead of having a rocket breather like old school times, they've now run these breathers into the intake manifold. Right. They use the vacuum from the intake manifold to help ventilate crankcase pressure. And uh, what all essentially it does is oil vapor runs straight back into the engine mm -hmm. and um, burns along with the fuel air mixture so you end up with this gunk on your plugs. When you go into performance build you start removing these um, economy features. but. Uh, <laughs> We're only going for nitrous, we're not going for a performance build. We just want to see if we can push the envelope on this little engine, give it a tw double its horsepower in a factory form, and see if it doesn't scatter its intestines all over the, over the strip. So, we'll see what happens. So we've just got our new plugs in. We've gapped them. We've got them all set, essentially. And uh, just getting ready put it all back together and fire the vehicle up and see how it runs now with its new with its new plugs in it. Definitely seems a bit happier now that it hasn't got clogged up spark plugs, but uh, it's going to be even happier once we start squeezing the nitrous oxide down its throat. Now, if we were a P plater still, 17 years of age, fresh out of school, and uh, we wanted to keep our car nice and hot, this is probably how we'd leave it. We've got our pod filter on there, we've got some fresh oil, and we're ready to rumble, we're ready to race. But we're going to go a little bit further. Uh, today we've got to add a couple of things. Um, one of them is basically we're going to have to drill and tap a hole inside the throttle body and that's where our nitrous fogger nozzle is going to sit because you want it in behind your throttle body and as you can see here we've got a plastic manifold so we don't want to go trying to drill and tap into that. Um, so that's going to be next on the list, we'll get that throttle body up pretty soon. But also, really important, you can't go to the track, run and giggle gas and not have one of these bad boys on your vehicle. So. Our next most important role, our next most important task I should say, is to put those all over the car. So we'll get into that now. A little bit of glass cleaner, a little bit of elbow grease, and a nice, nice dry cloth. We'll get rid of some of this dust and grime that we'll have on our windscreen. And we'll get ready to drop these nitrous oxide stickers on.
And there you go guys. Now everyone at the track knows what we've brought. We've brought some Giggle Gas and a Hyundai. We've brought the Max Spray Hyundai to the track, ready to rumble. Other races have been warned. The officials know we are ready to go. <laughs> so we've just pulled our custom uh, intake pipe off. Um, I know you Honda guys are getting a, getting a nice rub down on this one. Um, but we've just pulled our cold air intake off if you would, just to get to the throttle body so we can start looking at where we're gonna put our nitrous fogger. We've got our new nitrous colder plugs in there. We just had the vehicle running, see how it run. It actually ran a little bit better. So I don't know if the uh, previous owners put the wrong plugs in this thing and I've just gone to a normal style plug for it. But um, if you look at the packet, what I should have done is gone colder, or in theory, I've gone to a colder plug. But uh, you know, it seems to be working pretty well for us so far. So I've just about got all these bolts cracked. Got a couple of, a couple of sensor lines to pull off and uh, this should all come off pretty straight, pretty straightforward. You wanna grab that longer extension out for us too, bro? The longer extension? Yeah, this Better? Dry push, see if it binds Yep. Yep. Well guys, we've got our nitrous stickers on, we've got our throttle body modified for the fogger, we've got a new intake manifold to make room for our nitrous fuel system. So now we're just waiting for the fuel cell, fuel pump and nitrous kit to arrive up at our door and then we'll get the rest of this thing happening. Whoop, whoop, Cheers whoop, guys, whoop, whoop, whoop. have fun. So since last time we spoke, we've actually managed to get most of the back out of this vehicle. We were going to go ahead and take this trim out as well, but we've decided to leave that be for now and um, we reckon with all the crap that we've got out of there so far, we've dropped a few kilos anyway. So once we whack a few more ponies up his ass, with a few less kilos, we should be good to go. Alright guys, so we've done a fair bit on the Max Spray Hyundai today. We were going to spend some time with our mate Benji, having a look at his Skyline build. Um, some family issues came up with Benji today, so we've ended up doing another spray uh, episode of the Max Spray Hyundai. Um, in future episodes, we're going to start going over some things like the differences between forged pistons and stock pistons. This one's a higher compression uh, race piston, so it's quite light compared to what came out of the vehicle initially. And being the flat top, it's actually got a little bit more compression than what the uh, original had as well. So we can go through some of these things, the pros and cons, costs, and what they're going to do for your build and whether or not you need them. Uh, another thing we're going to be doing over the next coming months, we've got a Subaru engine here, an EJ20. Uh, We've got a bit of a client who wants wants a rebuild done, so with that we'll do a rebuild. We'll do some we'll do some videos showing you how a Subaru engine works because it's actually really unique in the sense that the block is a two piece block, unlike any other vehicle that I know of so far. Um, we also get to go through and we'll show you some DIY tricks when we get to doing that. Uh, when I say DIY tricks, I'm going to go through some things like porting the head because we're going to port the cylinder head on this at home. And with that, we're also going to make our own flow bench. So I'm going to go through step by step how to make your own flow bench for less than $100. And I'm going to show you how to use that flow bench to go and port your heads. So stay tuned. We've got more on the Max Spray Hyundai coming up. And obviously we've got these other little side projects coming as well. So we'll try and keep plenty of content for you guys and keep you guys happy. Thank you very much.